Hi everybody, Devin here from Let's Head Out. Today we are headed to Pit South Pittsburgh, Tennessee to the Lodge Museum of Cast Iron. Um, so yeah, let's head out. So, uh, so we made a little detour uh, before we went to South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, to uh, to to Hicks and Pike, and we went by Dutch Bros, and uh, we got a coffee. Um, they've got their new um, they've got their new uh, it's the their their St. Patrick's Day coffees. This is this one is called a Shamrock Kicker. Um, you can get it iced. Hannah got it iced. Um, I got it hot. Um, they've got little gold specks on the top of it. Um, uh, yeah, so there are some specks on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, the gold specks. <laughs> uh, the hot, the hot melts really quick. So, um, so, so you can't really, um, see it on the hot ones. Um, but it is a, uh, I believe they said it was, um, it was Irish cream flavored. Um, it is really, really good. It's, there's actually a coconutty kind of taste to it. Um, I... I really, I really enjoy this. I sometimes when I go to Dutch Bros um, and I try to change up, I normally get the Golden Eagles. But sometimes whenever I change up, um, it doesn't always work out. This one is really good. I highly suggest, highly recommend getting the uh, Shamrock Kicker. Uh, so yeah, um, so I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the coffee. And uh, so since we got our, so since we're all uh, caffeinated up. We're going to head on to South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. All right, so we have uh, made it here at the Lodge Factory Store and the museum. So uh, we're going to go in, and I think it's, uh, from what I've read, it's $10 a person to get into the museum part of it. Um, so yeah, we're going to go do the museum. All right, so here we have a uh, family of... Uh, Dutch oven, uh, lodge, uh, cast iron. So we've got Lucky and Pan Panelope here and Ferris here. All right, so we are uh, gonna head on in and uh, check in to get our ticket and uh, go through the museum. All right, so here is a uh, of uh, National Cornbread Festival pans. And uh, the National Cornbread Cook-Off Champion trophy, I guess. Eight pound skillet crown is what that is. And this is a wedge hat. That's cornbread. It's like cornbread. Uh, um, here is a wall. No. Wall of pans. And uh, the beginning. So we're going to uh, go on in. Alright, so we're going to uh, go down this ramp here. And uh, check out this museum. Hannah's excited. Look at her running down the. Look at her running down the the ramp here. Hannah says, "It's it's cast iron." I don't know where to I don't know where to start here. Look at that. So we're gonna start with this wall of cast iron. Uh, is that stamps? 
items, match plates. I think it's stamps. Yeah, Bates. patterns and match plates. There we go. Yeah, it's molds. Yeah. Well, they will match plates. So these are the molds that they use to make the different things out of um, the ridge, Dutch oven, top. Um, and they're talking about all their stuff there. That's pretty, that's pretty neat there with their roosters on it. Oh yeah, there's a rabbit, a little bunny rabbit. That's a toy skillet and griddle. Waffle iron. Griswold, Griswold rabbit mold. That's neat. And then here, Old, uh, old wood stove. And a uh, parlor stove. And, uh, dog irons. Put your firewood on in the fireplace. And an insert. So this is a quality assurance. Thanks. Yeah. Picked up two pieces? Yep, three. Put it the button again. I would say it dropped it, it, dropped it back off. So we're going to head on over uh, this way and uh, start, uh, I, do, I guess it does molding first, so it shows it molding, and it pushes it out, and it's hot. Um, so this talks about the molding. So they grab the pattern, which is right here, and then it heats it up, and then it pushes it into that one, and it makes the pans, and then the dried pans come out over here, with all the bits, and then it shakes it all off, shakes all the, all that stuff off, and this big drum, and uh, after the molten is poured, the casting solidify and go through a process we officially call the shakeout. So they move along a vibrating conveyor belt until it looks like this. And then it goes through the little machine for shot blasting. She gives it the texture. And it comes out here. And they get polished and situated. Um, and 
And they go down this conveyor belt into the washing cycle where they get washed. <clears throat> this is uh, in the bath, the casting swirl in a bath of stainless steel media, soap, and water. The steel media is designed to come in complete contact with every inch of the skillet for a deep clean that enhances the finish. So this is the steel media, which is what it was washed in. And it goes through the seasoning and the drying, or drying, and then seasoning, and it comes out as full pans. And then it's packaged and sent to the stores. Alright, so around here, um, shows different uses of uh, cast iron and right here is the world's largest skillet it is 14,360 pounds of its 12 feet round by 18 foot long and 2.5 feet deep that is something else thing here where you can uh, create your own cookbook. So it's Appalachian, Soul Food, Saltwater South, or Cajun and Creole. Which one? Saltwater South. Fish? Soul Food then. Mm. Yeah. That looks good. It does look good. Gonna add biscuits. Oh, southern green soup. We'll add that to a cookbook. <laughs> Summer swash casserole. Me is gonna add all these to a cookbook. Uh, how about that? Okay. Get to add some catfish. Cast iron peach cobbler. Mm. I've probably made that before. Probably. <laughs> what about strawberry cobbler? Oh, well, you gotta have a. Uh, um. Keep moving. Kentucky pound cake. Kenny's country gravy. We need that. Uh, sorghum bread pudding. I don't really like bread pudding. Mm -hmm. Tennessee Valley Jambalaya. Ooh, chocolate. That might be. You reckon chocolate pecan pie? Mm hmm. Let's see. Apple fritters? Sure. Corn pudding? Yeah. Tennessee white chili. Here's your fried okra. Spoon rolls? Mm. Now I got a salt water sound. Oh, the pimento cheese dip. Pimento cheese? We got 18 recipes in our cookbook so far. <laughs> Fried cat. Oh, we got that one yeah, already. Ooh, roasted chicken, Savannah red rice. That's all of that. Probably none of that. No. Shrimp pasta. Uh oh. We don't want to add that. Actually, you know what? That sounds good too. 
seafood. All right. So here's our thing. We're going to finish and send it. So I'm going to fill out this thing and then we'll have us a cookbook. All right, so this area is about cooking where we just made the, uh, the cookbook. Um, so here's some different uh, ingredients that people use. Um, and things you can actually, I guess you can snip these. Nope, nope. I'm not sure. Oh no, the lid won't stay on. What is that? That's biscuits. That's biscuits? That's not biscuits. Oh. Smell it. Oh, that's like a candle. Is it's it what it like apple. It's pork. I don't know if that's pork rinds or fried chicken. It's like that candle. No, it's kind of like fried chicken. I guess it's made to smell like biscuits. This is like dill pickle season. Then what is this? Like smoke, like apple something. Smoke something, like a flavoring. Oh, that's apple wood or something like that. I'm not sure. It's just wood. So what is it for? I guess it just shows you different food ways. It looks like fried chicken in yeah, that one. I don't really smell like fried chicken. It does look like it fried does. chicken. I don't smell. I'm having a hard time with these lids. Having a hard time with that. That didn't really smell like fried chicken. Um, here is some more uh, grizzle. This is grizzle cast iron. Birmingham Wagner. Different different makers of cast iron things. All right, so we're gonna head over here to this last part and uh, check it out. All right, so this area is called Generations of Lodge. Um, so here is Joseph Lodge. So he left his home in search of work to support his family. Uh, his search led him throughout the Western Hemisphere, learning new trades and growing as a leader of a man since he eventually landed in Southern Appalachia where he staked his claim and began to build his legacy. So here is a legacy vault um, with some of his original things. Oh, it looks like a like a bank vault. So, um, so this is his incorporations for his business and all of his uh, ledgers, I guess. Everything. And the Black Lock Lodge Company safe. Kinda got a glare on it. Oops, sorry man. Stepped on her. I'm glaring off the bars. <laughs> Silver. So here is the desk. This is uh, it's the different boxing and packaging. Won a goodbye award. It's the first iron. For this foundry. Yeah, 
this has a where you put the metal in and it melts. heats it up and melts it and pours it out. Yep. And these are some uh Perfect. novelty items, doorstops, garden homes. Um they built these during the Great Depression. Uh, when people didn't need a lot of cookware, so they started making little crickers. Little, little Scotty dog. You said it boosted sales. I guess that I could put a little moment in there and make them feel better during the depression. That's pretty cool. There's a pirate ship. Yep. And uh, this is the man behind the iron. Um, for, it says for 60 years, Gus Hyatt was known as the man who could do every job in the foundry. He said he started working when he was only 14 and became an expert in nearly every piece of equipment in town. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to head on around this way. Chicken foot. Oh, that's probably what it is. It looks like a chicken foot. Oh, it is. Slaw Stuntfield Iron Company. It's like a chicken, like a chicken foot. That's what it looks like. Kind of a neat knife. That's his passport. Wow, they look different now. Yeah, they do. Oh, right here. No? Yeah. I couldn't turn that around. Above. Maybe that is it? Yeah, I think that is it. So that was uh, Joseph Lodge's passport. Yeah. And uh, these are journals from all of his travels. So, yeah. All right. Oh, they've even got uh, Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet. I think you can make cornbread. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. 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 Check it out. Piglet, Tigger, Pooh. We've done been through this. <laughs> So they have little uh, fact or fiction things. And uh, this is the great debate. Uh, let's, let's get Hannah on this. No soap or soap? Okay, I don't wash the dishes, but it has to be mild. So I'm gonna go with <coughs> soap because it has to be mild. Can you believe she just did that? But you can't put soap directly on the palate. That's the way it is. And you can't use scrubby. So what am I going to use? I said you can use some scrubby. It said you can use a, and a good scrub. So I'm going to do this. It's your own, I think it's more of your own personal, personal. I preference. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> chips. I'm going to do soap. So you touch the cookware like on the other one. Touch the I'm Chris Doublefield, the chef at Lodge Cast Iron, and I'm going to show you how to cook in a camp Dutch oven. I... All right, so that was the Lodge Museum of Cast Iron. Did I say that right? Yes. I said it right. Um, it was a really neat museum. Um, there's a lot of things to do for like younger kids. If the, if the younger kids wanted to come, they have a an area that I couldn't film because there was a bunch of kids. Um, Hannah Hannah was able to do it. Uh, but you can, they have like this, what is it, like like Play-Doh? It's like kinetic sand. Kinetic sand. They have, it's like black, black kinetic sand. It kind of looks like cast iron. 
and that you can push down these molds and make like little like molds yeah, of different things. Um, Hannah, Hannah really enjoyed it. Um, the displays are really cool, uh, showing you how they make the cast iron and different steps. Um, all the family stuff and the world's largest frying pan. That thing was huge. That's something else. Um, if you if you go for anything, go for the gigantic frying pan. <laughs> all right, so that wraps the video up. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're watching our videos and haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That's the best way for me to ask you to help support our channel. Um, if you have subscribed, thank you so, so much. It really means a lot to my family and I um, and to the future of our channel. Um, if you like the video, please give us a big thumbs up. Uh, please ring the notification bell to be notified uh, whenever we post new videos. And uh, so, yeah, like I said, that wraps this video up. Uh, so until next time, let's head out together. See ya!